gland botulinum toxin injection in canalicular block and the presenting author is dr amit sethi good morning my topic today is the use of lacrimal gland botulinum toxin injection in canalicular blocks this is my hospital the indian naval hospital jivanti in the beautiful city of goa we have no financial interest in presenting this paper canalicular blocks lead to epiphora and affect the quality of life of a patient that is the patient has social embarrassment uh, irritation and blurred vision the treatment is primarily surgical most commonly the surgery done is stenting intubation conjunctival dcr and uh, etc however with these surgeries the anatomic success is very good but then there is high rate of patient dissatisfaction and complications so in this study we studied the efficacy of botox a in lacrimal gland to reduce the epiphora in canalicular blocks <clears throat> a little about botox the first investigator to pursue the clinical application of botulinum toxin was dr allen scott of san francisco who used it to weaken the extraocular muscles in the monkey with the hope that it can be used in the non surgical treatment of strabismus in humans now what is botox botulinum it is a it is a toxin which is produced by the anaerobic bacteria clostridium botulinum it has seven serotypes and what we use is botulinum toxin a it consists of a heavy chain and a light chain the heavy chain binds to the presynaptic membrane of the nerve terminal the light chain gets internalized and this is the light chain which inhibits the inhibits the secretion of acetylcholine at the presynaptic terminal the onset of action is 3 to 4 days and the duration is 3 to 6 months both the main and accessory lacrimal glands contribute to the basal and reflex tear production botulinum toxin injection into the lacrimal gland blocks the presynaptic release of acetylcholine and helps in correcting hyperlacrimation botox has been effectively used in gustatory hyperlacrimation which is called crocodile tears following seventh cranial nerve palsy but as of now there are only three publications which reports its use in functional epiphora or lacrimation epiphora due to lacrimal obstruction in material and methods patients with epiphora with canalicular blocks who presented between august 15 to 17 were included in the surgery none of the patient had received a surgical treatment epiphora was graded subjectively and objectively with monk scoring and shermer's test before and after treatment at 1 4 12 and 24 weeks and 2.5 units of botox a was injected shermer's was done in the standard way and monk's was done as follows there were the various gradings how botox was injected it is as shown the patient was told to look down nasally towards the opposite shoulder the upper lid was retracted and botox injection was injected in the palpebral lobe of lacrimal gland in the results we had 12 patients seven women and five uh, uh, seven men and five women with a mean age of 65.7 years uh, only five patients had to be given a second dose of botox a the procedure was easy to perform and well tolerated by all patients In the statistical analysis the mean reduction of the scores was compared using the student's t test this is uh, the analysis of the shermer's test the mean reduction of scores compared to the baseline value and the previous reading was maximum was maximal during the first and four weeks and then it started decreasing during the 12 weeks as shown in red the same score was for the monks test so we inferred that the effect of botox was maximum during the first and four week and then the effect started decreasing from the 12 weeks onwards the same is depicted in this graph it shows that the score was reduced both for monks and shermers from first to 12th week or from first and four weeks and then it started decreasing from the 12 week onwards so our results were similar to other studies the maximum rate of epiphora reduction was at 1 week which maximized at 4 weeks between 12 to 24 weeks the improvement diminished marginally both the tests correlated well with each other well with the side effects three patients out of 12 had ptosis and diplopia 2 to 3 days after the injection which resolved by 3 to 4 weeks there were no signs of dry eyes so the take home message is Botox had a favorable response in a 24 weeks follow up it's a easy procedure relatively inexpensive non invasive with few side effects the disadvantage is that it's a temporary relief and has to be repeated 
So the results were encouraging and it seems to be a good alternative treatment to surgery. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sethi. I injected in my cases, I got many of the patients, they were asymptomatic for at least six months. So why it is less in your cases? I, I didn't get your question, sir. The duration of effect of sir. botulinum toxin, I got up to six months. Yes, sir. Sir, in uh, my case also, sir, uh, as I said, sir, most of the cases, uh, as I said, sir, only five out of 12 had to be given the second dose, sir. Most of them were comfortable, but then varying from patient to patient, the epiphora was less as from the starting, but then they, they demanded uh, another injection that I want to be even better, so we had to repeat, sir. <coughs> Did you have any uh, side effects? You said there were a few side effects. What were they? What sir, the mean? side effect was ptosis and diplopia in uh, these patients, few patients, three patients as I have enumerated, and it started from the fourth day, and uh, it lasted till one month. In spite of this, one of the patients said, I still want a repeat Botox injection in spite of the side effects because they were quite happy with the reduction in you, epiphora. You have given injection without everting the eyelid. Uh, so if you evert the eyelid, sir. it will be more, uh, the, you can inject directly in the lacrimal gland, palpable uh, lobe. Uh, yes, sir. I, uh, because because yes. the doses and uh, this diplopia should not occur with this injection. Uh, yes, sir. Only three had uh, diplopia and doses, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir.